So the thought of becoming a real estate investor is intriguing to you. How about I give you five steps to help you get to that point? Hey guys, I'm Nicholas Schrouder, one half of the Schrouder Brothers, Berkshire Hathaway Results Realty. And in today's episode, let's talk about becoming a real estate investor. We all watch HDTV. We watch all, all the home improvement shows that make real estate investing, flipping properties look so easy. In 30 minutes, you make $100,000. Most of us realize that's not necessarily the case. But I can give you five quick tips to help you get from zero to becoming a real estate investor. Now, let me give you a little bit of background before we get into this. In a previous life, I did live in a different state and I bought and sold properties. And during that time, before I was 30 years old, I had sat at a closing table roughly about 50 times from purchases and sales. So at one point in time, I managed roughly a dozen properties. So I can say I have a little bit of clout when I talk about this. So let's go ahead and do, again, five quick steps. So let's start out. Number one, the big obvious one, educate yourself. Sounds easy enough, right? Let's break it down just a little bit. First, if you've never bought a piece of property for investment, you want to pick a niche. Do you want to go single family? Do you want to go multifamily, which is duplex, triplex, quads, and even bigger, possibly apartment buildings? Do you want to fill the mobile home niche? A lot of money to be made there. Do you want to go commercial? Just things you gotta think about. It's gonna be so overwhelming at the beginning. If you don't have a niche, you're just gonna, you're gonna flounder. So you need to have some sort of idea to track yourself in the right direction. So you need to make a plan. Are you gonna buy and hold? Are you gonna buy, hold, and rent? Are you gonna flip? What is your individual plan? I can't make that decision for you. Maybe you start out one way and you end up going another way, or maybe you do both. But just at the very beginning, know what that first home is going to be. Maybe, like I said, maybe you're going to buy that home and you're going to start your rental portfolio. So now you, now you have a residual income each month. So step one, educate yourself. Number two, goes along the same lines. Know your math. What the heck does that mean, right? Okay, math is going to be different for everybody. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a tool and I'm going to show you how you can work your numbers to where they benefit you. But here's just a few things you need to consider whenever you're looking at a property. Estimated closing costs, your potential rental income if it's going to be a rental property for you, your holding costs. What are holding costs? Well, while you have that home, depending on how you've done your financing, which we'll get to in a second, you're going to have insurance, you're going to have taxes, you're going to have utilities and you're gonna have interest on that loan until you decide which way you're gonna go with it. You need to account for vacancy over the course of that property. It repairs, what do you need to do? Always estimate high, because once you start tearing walls down, if that's what you're gonna do, a lot of things hide behind those walls. Again, if you've seen the HGTV shows, they show a small portion of that, you never know what lies behind. So, management fees, if you're renting it, are you gonna manage it yourself, or are you gonna use a management company? Is there an HOA? Definitely gotta keep that in mind as well. And when you have an HOA, you have that monthly fee and you also have the rules you have to follow. So are your repairs in line with what the HOA guidelines are? Your purchase price versus your ARV. What is ARV? ARV stands for after repair value. So you buy it at one price, you do the repairs, the renovations that you intend on doing. What is it worth then? So your ARV is what that is. and. The big number, big number is what is your desired profit? Is it a rental property where you're making $100 a month or is it a flip where you wanna make 10, 20, or $30,000? All those numbers that I just talked about along with some others are things that need to be taken into account to get to your desired profit. That's why you're doing this. You wanna make, you wanna invest in your future, invest in your rental portfolio. What is your desired profit? Know your math so you can get to your number. Number three. Shameless here, that's okay. Get yourself a good real estate agent. Why? There's a lot of places out there where you can find investment properties. Whenever I did it, I did bank foreclosures. I also did foreclosures on the courthouse steps. It's a different process, 
but there's also other things out there too. There are tax liens, so tax sales, and there are the traditional REO, which is real estate owned properties, which you can purchase through a real estate agent directly off of the market. But why do you need a real estate agent? A real estate agent is gonna be able to give you that access to the MLS. There's a lot of search sites out there, I won't name them, but they share the MLS's information. However, they don't share it as fast as MLS does because they get their information from the MLS feed. In a competitive market, and when you're an investor, you are gonna be competitive because there's gonna be other investors out there that are also looking for similar deals, so you like to be one of the first people to see this property. A real estate agent is going to be able to give you instant alerts so when a home that fits your criteria, whether it's a certain amount of bedrooms, a certain area, certain price points, when that property hits the market, you're getting an alert so you know you need to act. So that's gonna be very, very important. Like I said, there's a lot of places to find it, find properties that work for you, but a real estate agent is just another tool in your toolbox that you definitely wanna have. So, number four, what is the fourth step? Arrange your financing. Sounds simple enough. How are you gonna do this? Are you gonna do the traditional way? Are you gonna go to a bank and lend or lender and do a conventional financing? Are you gonna do hard money, which is borrowing from somebody? Are you able to do cash? Obviously, you're gonna get your best deals whenever you're, whenever you're able to do cash. Some of these properties will only be sold cash depending on where it is at, if it needs repairs, things like that. Are you working with investors? Are you working with a partner or partners? And if that's the case, have you drawn up a partnership agreement so it doesn't get into a predicament later and your partners, which may be friends now, might not be later? Just things to think about. Arrange your financing in advance. Number five, start analyzing properties that you see no matter where you look, whether it be the MLS, the other search sites, in the newspaper, online, you know, wherever you see them, start analyzing them. You wanna look at what your rental rates are, what you think a house is going to sell for, the ARV, all of those numbers. You wanna start analyzing, start working your math, and then start making offers. I was once told, and I will never forget this, very, very, very successful investor. If your first offer doesn't embarrass you, you're offering too much. So if you stop and think about that for just a second, when you start, you definitely want to make a lot of offers and you want to test the waters. Maybe you do need to make some embarrassing offers. And that's where you need a good real estate agent that's willing to do that for you. Yes, it takes some time to write an offer, but if you are a serious investor, that real estate agent is willing to work with you and work for you to find that deal. And they know not everything is going to be an accepted offer. A lot of times you will need to throw a lot of offers out there, maybe do some counters, maybe not get a lot of deals, but eventually you keep doing it, you'll learn and you'll get that offer accepted, which is obviously the main idea. So analyze, offer, analyze, offer, analyze, offer. And step six is the ultimate goal. You become an investor or a landlord, a little bit of both. Again, what is your plan? Do you wanna be a flipper? Do you wanna be a landlord? Do you wanna do both? Just at the beginning, make sure you find your niche and stay there until you get yourself a property. Once you learn, then you can venture out. So, as I mentioned a while ago about knowing your math, there are some tools. So, if you look right here, this is biggerpockets.com. Bigger Pockets is a website that I haven't been on in years and I was doing some searching the other day and came across it yet again. Great tool for anybody wanting to invest in real estate. Right here, when you log in, it is free site. There is some premium features, but everything you see here is all part of the free site. Right up here at the top, tools. If you look at these calculators, rental property, fix and flip, you have a rehab estimator, wholesaling, and some other ones here. Very, very, very valuable tools for you. So, go ahead. We'll just go ahead and click on the rental property calculator. Just to give you an idea, you'll click on start report. And then if you scroll through, you put in your basing information. You're gonna put in your loan details. You're gonna put in your rental income. What if you don't know your rental income? Where are you gonna find that? Aha, I have a tool for you. This right here is called the rento meter. 
you enter your address, you enter some of the statistics of the home that you're analyzing, and it's going to give you an idea of what reasonable rent rates are for that area. So you can take that information and go back to Bigger Pockets and put that in. Next, you'll go to expenses, and you will move on, then you'll be able to finish your, your analysis here, and you'll be able to figure out what the numbers are for that property and if they fit your numbers. Again, it's gonna be different for everybody. Do, do those numbers fit your numbers? So again, biggerpockets.com is a fantastic tool to use. Rentometer, fantastic tool to use. Bigger Pockets actually has some other great features in here. They have a weekly podcast where you can get a lot of information and a lot of other features. But, man, my dog's barking in the background. See, that's, that's how you know these, event, these videos are real because we have background noise. But yeah, real quick, guys, like I said, just wanted to give you five quick tips with the sixth one being become an investor or landlord. So it's really five tips to help you get your first rental property. We're here always. If you are looking in the Central Florida area, Definitely reach out to us. We can help you get you set up on those MLS searches. If you are an investor anywhere else and you just want some information, hopefully we can help you out. Liveflowlife.com. And again, we do these videos each and every Monday. We do them for homeowners. We do them for home sellers. We do them for investors to help you become a more informed buyer, seller, or investor. So if we can help you out at any time, please feel free to reach out. We're on all social media. And we'd love to hear from you. So if you have any questions, please do reach out. Liveflowlife.com. Thanks for tuning in. We hope to hear from you soon.